welcome back to my home this year for Christmas. I have had so much fun this year creating all of these Christmas videos for you. And I have another one. Here's what's exciting about this. I just wanna say it's three different projects and all three of them are quite different as are the people that they're being done for. This time, I'm gonna take you with me on a trip to San Diego where I'm from and I still have two adult sons who live there with their families. So the first project I'm gonna show you is my son Jimmy and his wife Emily, their home and their four children. The second one is my son Scott. He couldn't be more opposite or different than his brother Jimmy, which is fun, right? You get to see all the different sides of my life for one thing, but my family. So you're gonna to get to see how I went and I helped Scott and his partner Rick decorate their condo downtown in San Diego, along with some personal things that took place along the way. And then finally, I'm gonna bring you right back here to Tulsa because I decorated the guest room of my home completely after I'd finished all my other decorating. In fact, we'd already filmed the entire walkthrough of the house. I decided, you know, I am gonna have guests for Christmas and I should decorate this room, so I did. So you're gonna to get to see all very different styles with the same purpose in mind, which is to celebrate the joy of the holidays and of Christmas. Look at them. Each one of my grandchildren has one of my pieces of luggage all based on height and age and weight. And I'm back to San Diego. And my granddaughter said, Mimi, they knew you were coming. They put a bow and snowflakes on top of the walkway just for you because you were coming. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Right, I'm at Jimmy and Emily's house. Hi. And the kids are here. And I wanted to show you guys what the house looks like before we get started with the Christmas decorating. Are you guys excited? Yay! Yeah. Christmas 2022 will never be the same. Yay! So I had a bunch of things shipped from Tulsa to San Diego before I even left here because I knew that they loved the look. Many of you have seen Shara, Shara's my daughter, you've seen her house and her house is so beautiful. It's a very trending look, a lot of neutrals, light colors, very family friendly, but also a very clean and sophisticated and organic look. So that's what I bought for the kids. I had them shipped and the first thing we did when I got there was open the boxes. <laughs> We started off with a family meeting. I wanted to sit and talk with Jimmy and Emily and find out what was their intention. What did they want their house to feel like by the time we were done? And just exactly what areas were we going to address? You start with the obvious mm -hmm. focal point wall. Right. And then once you have that done, first off, you know how much you have left over. Right. right. And you've established your style and then you take it through to the rest of your spaces. Yeah. The first challenge that we went through was the same one that probably a lot of you have. You live in a small house and there, you know, you see me, I'm moving things from one room to the next because I have space to do that. But for these guys, where are they going to put things? So the biggest challenge and the biggest question to start with was, where are we going to put the Christmas tree? Of course, yes, I had quite the uh, install crew on hand. Four children under the age of 12 and mom and dad. Turns out Jimmy was really happy with what it looked like to push those etagers aside, bookcases, and place that tree right in the middle. Once the tree was done, the next thing was to go on to address that same wall, which is the wall with the tree and then the two bookcases on either side. The question is, where do we want to put your light lights, sure. uh -huh. the floor lamps? Should they not go back to where let's, they were? Let's, well, let's talk about it. First off, coming here might be good, but I think that it it's going to- some decor. Yeah, it's going to take away some well, decor, here. which is different. That's possible, which is different 
than when you just had plants. And so it was a good foreground, foreground background. They could go here and go over the sofas this way. Mm -hmm. You could do it here. Either side of the And do it on either side of the sofa. You could do it here. Are we gonna bring the chairs back or are we gonna wait and see? Let's wait and see. Now here's the thing to think about with Jimmy and Emily's place. It's very symmetrical incredibly symmetrical first impression. But in this house, we didn't have other choices necessarily. You've got a wall that you look at straight ahead. You put your tree in the center. You have two matching bookcases on either side, two matching lamps, and two matching sofas. That's about as symmetrical as it gets. Oh, and you put a coffee table in the center. So you need to keep that in mind as you're making your decisions on where and what you're gonna put in all the other locations. Used to be down, but now I, stay up. I did have a very brilliant moment. Kid cam. All right, I got my cameraman over here for you. Yeah, and he's like hiding in between the um, daddy long legs floor lamp so that he can get a good angle. You make me feel just how I like. Emily and I talked about it a lot. And we decided, you know what? It really does look good if we create more of a mirrored look on either side. So here was the deal. The two top shelves are identical. They mirror each other. And the two bottom shelves are identical, mirroring each other. But in between, rather than go out and buy two of everything, I used shapes, sizes, and colors that were similar to get a similar look. We should have some Jimmy Ropes and Christmas music playing. Rock and roll. Go ahead. Christmas tree. Ah, uh, there's more. <laughs> and happy holidays. Be looking thing. <laughs> so I'm going to run a string of little fairy lights through the tree just so that that is not a dark spot on the shelf at nighttime. And light this in through here, so we'd have light on the tree mm -hmm. and light down here. Okay. And the other is to, and look at it in relation to the tree too, the other is to light up the garland. I think you should light up the garland. Is that the one you like best? Yes. What if we did the garland and the bottom? Would it look yeah. weird if the this one wasn't lit? I think that my vote was gonna be the bottom one. So if we have enough to do the garland and the bottom, that'd be great. So see how I'm moving each one of these? Mm -hmm. Actually, that needs to go up, I think. So I'm gonna use the wire itself to sorta of prop it. See how that now sticks out? Mm -hmm. it gives it more, um, more personality, I think. Yeah. Okay, we've come down to, you know, some would pe people would say the lighting of the tree. We are topping the tree with a tree. Oh, and Uncle Scott just got here. Oh, so he got Santa. here just in time. I hope it's Santa. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, he just had a baby. Santa! Santa! Santa. Santa. Okay, so um, you got here, you guys, you got here just in time. We just finished the tree and the things on either side. And Jimmy is going to do. Smith is going to do the honors yes. of putting the angel on top yes. of the tree. Another day of Christmas decorating at Jimmy's place. And I'm gonna head in there now. The kids are waiting for me. Super excited to get a little bit more done today. Woohoo! My grandchildren, of course, really wanted to help and their parents knew that in advance. So they set them up with their own trees and their bedrooms that they could completely decorate by themselves. And I like yeah. the little popcorn garland. Can you the, uh, 
lights up there. Oh, you and did? Then, stockings. Oh, that's so cute. Mm. Good job, you guys. It's perfect because you guys have more floor space, so you so can we, put your tree. We put all the lights Look there. at that. My goodness. And That's going to be fun to go to sleep to at night. Oh, yeah, then. and we put the wreath on. So cute. And I love how you decorated your tree. I, I, thought, I thought we would have a better spot for him, but... Well, he works there. Guy. Yeah, he's kind of the surface guy. Yeah. But those Surf. are really cute. Super and cute. Okay, look, at look what I see. Tags. Yep, yep, no yep. grandchild of mine will have tags on his tree. <laughs> so I'm going to attack the stair railing now. It's a cute little short rail here, but it does go up the staircase. So we're kind of talking about different ways to do it. And we already put up the uh, snowflakes at the top of the stairs and those are battery operated. So let's get going on. I thought that the staircase turned out really cute. Only part of it shows that, you know, from my opinion, when I saw the before pictures they had sent me, I thought, oh, it's just really a short banister, but actually it goes around the corner and up. And my little granddaughter, Mora and I were able to make it look absolutely beautiful and fit in with the tree and all the other decorations that we did in the downstairs. All right, Mora's finishing up over there. The garland, she's helping me make little tassels and we decided we needed one right there at the base. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy said, hey, I can make you one. Yeah, I cut 15 pieces that are roughly a foot long. Okay. Maybe 10 inches and put them all together. Cut 15 them. pieces, you say? This is 15 pieces. Okay. We'll see how it turns out. And I took one extra string and tied it around the middle. Okay. And then if you just fold it in half, kind of measure it by eye. And then you basically just want to wrap some string. So that one that you put in the middle, you're almost using it like a loop, so you didn't make it tight. Nope, this is just holding the yeah. spot inside. Perfect. This, okay. I'm gonna wrap it around. I'm actually gonna leave this a little bit extra out uh -huh. so I can tie it to itself at the bottom. Or if you had hot glue. <laughs> oh, yes. My mom's favorite. Yeah, weapon. <laughs> <laughs> You made a kind of a bow out of that last thing of beads. Oh, I think that's cute. That's really cute. Great. Yeah, it gives it a center point. Yeah. Jimmy had taken out the wreath that they used last year, which was kind of a new, it, it had that garland like we're using, which is like a spruce or pine look, but they had wrapped the lights. Now I want you to listen, just in case you've done this. And what that does is it, it keeps all of the leaves tight around the wreath base. So I took it down, redid the lights by taking them off and then fluffing out that the wreath. Oh my gosh, it was like night and day difference. And Jimmy and Emily really appreciated it. it is the thing that's missing is that depth perspective that I like to put in a tree where I take the balls deep in towards the trunk so I bought some soft colored balls kind of in the color palette slightly a little bit more because it's got this blue and I'm gonna try it in into the tree a little further to see if that gives us some reflection from the lights and more of a depth perception. There we go. You want your balls to hang. You don't want them to touch. There we go. I think I like it. Yes. Pretty. Do we like it? Beautiful. Watch the elbows. With all of the Christmas decorating done a day in advance, we were able to have a free day to go to Torrey Pines Beach, walk up and down the ocean, and climb the cliffs of Torrey Pines, which, believe it or not, I've never done. I lived in San Diego for 50 years, and I had never walked the cliffs of Torrey Pines. 
that's just crazy, right? And it was beautiful. We also managed to fit in a gingerbread house uh, decorating contest. Three different teams, three different winners, because that's what we do nowadays, we all win. <sighs> not that I'm competitive at all, certainly not with my grandchildren, Ugh, please. And we went to this amazing donut store. Oh my gosh, if you live in San Diego, uh, amazing. I couldn't make a decision on which one I wanted, so I bought one of everything, brought them home, cut it up into bite-sized pieces, and we had a contest or a, a debate on which was the best flavor. Each time I go back to San Diego, I try to make a point to see some of my old friends and it's delightful. This time I was with my girlfriends. We have a, a little group, we're small, but we call ourselves Designers Gone Wild. It was a great night with some great friends and it was a good thing that I took an Uber there. guys welcome to jimmy and emily's house here in southern california come on in these are all new decorations for them including the tree which they got at costco i thought it was such a great tree it's really easy to put together if you look closely you'll see that we used wooden beads in both gold and silver on this tree and created kind of a swirling effect down around the tree. We, my son and I, actually put a lot of these ornaments on here together. Now here's what you're gonna see that's very different than what I've done in the past. For the most part, this tree is decorated on the outside. Those of you who watch my videos a lot know that I often take the ornaments or the, the, the balls that have uh, shine and have like a iridescence to them, I take them deep into the tree near the trunk. And what that does is give you that see-through effect. We were able to do that in a few places, but for the most part, it's on the outside and it is topped by this adorable angel. You love the Merry Christmas sign? I know, right? So, Jimmy and Emily have these great bookcases on either side of this room. Normally, they're in just a little bit more, but we push them out to make room for the tree. You'll notice that the top shelf on both sides is identical. It is a mirrored image, as well as the bottom shelf on both sides. Then the two shelves in between, which by the way, we lowered one of these from what it is normally during the year, we added some similar items. Now the reason you do that is you can get yourself a really sense of peace. There's a lot of things on those shelves, but it doesn't feel chaotic, it feels beautiful. love these garlands and we ran some fairy lights through them. Uh, we got the garlands at Target. So those kind of come across the top as well as over here in the kitchen area. We've done the same thing using the same garlands and I just added uh, an additional pick in the center. But you see how they drape down on either side on both windows. It's important if you're going to have windows like this where you can stand in the room and see them at the same time. You want your tails that come down over the windows to be about the same amount of spacing, right? But I think that just looks great and it adds a beautiful touch of Christmas. They, they keep right here on the table that six people eat at every day, I bought them a beautiful wooden candle holder it has a trough of wax and it's just it's just enough a little bit of the garland this is that natural pine cedar <sighs> i'm out of breath we have a nativity scene and this is a really special one i believe emily got this from her grandmother and uh, so it has wonderful memories for her so we have the nativity scene here added some thicker pompous grass. And what's really cool is this pompous grass is in a nice, warm, almost a amber color. My son Jimmy, it was his idea, and I thought it was a great one, to emphasize the architecture of this house. 
It's unusual that not too many people have arched doors. If you have something like that in your house, how great is it to emphasize it by taking a fresh looking garland all the way around, and then we took some beads and made it into a bow. This beautiful, also pine looking, maybe it's not pine, maybe it's cedar. Leave me a comment below. What is this? I can tell you it's plastic, but it's some sort of I don't know, um, God made greenery that is usually picked at Christmas time. Maybe it's juniper. Juniper, cedar, I know it's not oak. The last thing in this room is you come around this way. Hello. So there's no there's no red in the house, shouldn't have said. How many of you, you can leave me a comment below, do you remember seeing Jimmy and Emily's house? that we did a Christmas videos, I want to say four, maybe five years ago. And um, yeah, we had all red and green. It was very traditional, very homey, cozy, warm family. This is something that really means a lot to Emily. So of course we had to include him. I don't know what the story is behind that. I'll have to ask. Is the key. Now look, it's a short banister that's actually exposed, but it does go all the way up the stairs and what you're gonna see here is, look, the look of that pompous grass that I put in the vase over there is now repeated here along with the, I'm still gonna call it, I'm gonna call it cedar um, garlands. And here's that homemade tassel that Jimmy made. And we finished it off down here with some brass bells. What I love about this is the stockings are hung three at a time here. When you have six people in your family, that's a lot of stockings, especially if you don't have a fireplace. So if you don't, hang them on the wall, hang them on a shelf, or hang them on your staircase banister. And in and among this, look at this. This is another bead effect. It's like, they look like little brass barrels, I think. And I don't know if they're cork, they might be, maybe it's wine bottle corks. <gasps> There's a DIY for next year. You could do something to your corks, string them all together and make something absolutely beautiful. But as you go on up the stairs, you're gonna see that we brought that cedar garland up, created a topper to it, and it also has the beads that are strung in between. Behind me, three snowflakes that light up, go up the stairs. I can tell you the kids, the family, Emily, Jimmy, they love how their house turned out and what an honor it was for me to get to come to San Diego and help them out this year. So, to that I say to you, very merry, what? Christmas? Christmas? There's a finger, there's a... Merry what? Christmas. Oh, a very... Merry Christmas! I am packed and ready to go to my next destination. Scott's on his way with Rick. They're picking me up and I'm gonna spend the rest of my time here in San Diego downtown staying with them so they should be here any minute you know how it is my bags are packed I'm ready to go and where's my son <laughs> imagine how excited and surprised I was when they picked me up and they said hey we're gonna take you ice skating what skates nowadays are not like the old lace-ups these like have fur inside of them they're actually pretty comfortable. Oh, yes, it's definitely slippery. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. My mom used to say it all the time. When you break your hip, it's the beginning of the end. Oh, my God. So all I could think of was, don't fall and break your hip. Oh, thank God I didn't. But it would have been nice if Rick or Scott was a really great skater. Oh no, they were just as bad as I was. <laughs> Where's 
<laughs> She's like, no, this way. As we came around the corner, all holding hands, still all on our skates and not on the ground, I couldn't help but remember I had done this once before. This is the vintage gold cage elevator. That too, ma'am. Ah, thank you, germs. Let's go to the lobby. This is an iconic hotel. Super old, oh my gosh, gorgeous and in incredible condition, and they just continue to add to it. So that was a huge highlight. Now that is a Christmas tree. I'm sure they don't take their balls in deep, but in this case, it doesn't seem to matter. I'm at Scott's, as you know, and- <laughs> I live in a parking lot. <laughs> Doesn't make you a car. Um, and we have this brainy idea rock. to go, right, to Costco the weekend before Thanksgiving. We sat down, we took a look around and decided, okay, we're gonna decorate for Christmas. Scott, where's your tree? It's in storage, okay. We're talking the, do you guys remember when I did Scott's Place downtown a couple years ago, right before I left for San Diego, or for Tulsa? This thing is like 10 feet tall. It hangs from the ceiling, from a 20 foot ceiling. The tree's not there and there's no hook in the ceiling and there's no ladder that goes up 20 feet. We were kind of unprepared. Oops. So we decided, okay, well, we're just gonna have to go out and buy a new Christmas tree. We got us a Christmas tree, a collar, some birch trees, some milk, and some battery operated candles. Oh, you need to go get some uh, batteries. Oh, yeah, batteries. But here you go. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that you were going to pay for it. <laughs> now you want that other stuff? Right, sorry. I want the 30 foot tree. <laughs> Super comfortable, she says. Well, if you think that's comfortable, look at my seat. <laughs> Let's see if all these dreams about yoga paid off. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you serious? Oh my gosh. I can't believe sure I am. that. Sure <laughs> We dropped off all the stuff we bought, right, at yep. uh, Costco. That was fun. And we are now at Target to hopefully get some ornaments and some balls and fill in the tree. Guys, we can do this. We're gonna go to Home Goods and where's the other place? Oh, and Michael's too, just to see. You know what's hilarious? Scott is poo-pooing anything that has any glitter or beads or sequins on it. I'm like, oh, this I is pretty. I grew up in a household where glitter was in the air. Right. Like you would <gasps> breathe it in. That explains why I'm gay. <laughs> I just said to him, wait till you see the room you're going to be staying at at my house. <laughs> you <laughs> got to be kidding me. <laughs> Mom. All right. I misspoke. I spoke to you. Hey, how about this? Look, let it Ooh, snow. Totally. That's nice. Yeah. That's masculine. Some might say we have a problem. <laughs> Some might. Right, now just gonna... I don't think so. I think we are, have a solution. That's what we're looking at here is a solution, right, Rick? You're ready. So we trudged through the stores. We filled the car up twice. You guys, if you watch my Christmas videos, heck, if you watch any of my decorating videos throughout the year, which by the way, I hope you do. Don't just be here for Christmas, just saying. If you watch me, you know that I have a philosophy. It's called overbuy. Overbuy, 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 and return what you don't use. Moving the Peloton. Told you, you gotta move stuff around in order to make room for Christmas. Part of the reason why um, we bought so much stuff is because we weren't fully certain what the color schemes were gonna look like. <laughs> I 
sat everyone down, including uh, Rick and Scott have two female roommates. Sat them down and we said, okay, I'm gonna lay these color schemes out. I'm gonna hang them. We're gonna hang them on the tree. And you tell me if you can see these balls or not. Because if you can't, that's probably not the direction we should go. I mean, why spend all that money on all that stuff if you can't even see it? Purple looks great. Purple is the one. <laughs> She's like, I don't know about Wait. you, but I am a design session member. <laughs> and we had different things in mind. For example, uh, the sofa that they have in their living room is a royal blue. So do we include blue in the tree? The guys wanted a masculine feel, which is It was my idea. You know what color ball showed up the best on that tree? White. So I said, hey, why don't you guys make dinner? Pour yourself a drink. I will do the architectural shape first, meaning I'm gonna go on and I'm going to place the white balls in a way that there's an even disbursement. It doesn't look planned, it still looks organic, but I've got the right amount creating this cone shape of a tree. Once I got those white balls on, then it was time for everyone to chip in and start putting the balls on the tree. And at that point, we weren't even into it. So the next day, Scott and I then added the rest of the Christmas balls, and so, so did Rick and I. Mom. Do you know how wonderful my son and his partner Rick are? They actually gave up the master bedroom. I got to sleep in the master bedroom, and the next morning, they brought me breakfast in bed. Ah, how wonderful, right? I mean, I don't know how you're gonna keep this up, but I really think you should continue to try. We were able to complete that tree by Sunday late afternoon. And remember, I don't know if I've told you this, but I was leaving the next day <laughs> at 11 in the morning. So I had a very limited amount of time and we still had all the other areas to decorate. We were able to do it pretty concisely. And honestly, my son Scott stepped up to the plate. Hey guys, I'm Scott Robeson, and this is my partner, Rick Ramirez, and welcome to our home. Come on in. All right, guys, I am so excited to show you all about our place and what we did for Christmas. As you guys have seen in the previous years, my mom has decorated my place for Christmas. Last year was in Little Italy, and I had this stunning Christmas tree from the modern Christmas tree. These ceilings are very high. We also don't have a ladder that high to put a hook in the ceiling. I just moved in with my partner, Rick to his place in East Village. Now our place, and I'm super excited. My mom came to visit, and I cannot wait to show you guys what we did with the place. You guys probably will notice this from several places. My mom tries to guilt trip me. She's like, that's where my joy sign went. And I'm like, how did you know where your joy sign went when you have an entire, like, end of the world bunker full of Christmas? She remembers. So we got these trees at Costco. Uh, I think they were like 60 bucks. Super cheap, super easy to put together. This is actually a blanket that was on our couch. We took this and repurposed it to look kind of like a little dirt situation. Uh, this right here was actually from the place in Little Italy. And this tree right here was actually from Rick's mom. So we took a lot of things that we already had, some new stuff, repurposed it, and I think it turned out perfect. One of the things that we recently got this year was from Rick's mom is this bowl, which is, I don't know what my mom called it. She said it's some kind of like seashell that's like crushed up in like an acrylic, but I really, really, really wanted to use it in our house for Christmas this year. Behind us, we have the nine foot Christmas tree that literally is the easiest Christmas tree to put together. With this tree, one of the things I love is that it's pre-lit and it has these LED lights on here. You can turn it to three different levels of brightness. And even though my mom would murder me if I did this, you can actually click a button and it turns into a colorful tree. Not that that's bad, but we wanted to go with that whole light, bright kind of uh, Christmas vibe. The tree is pre-fluffed, which is literally a saving grace because I hate doing that. 
you probably do as well. Um, but in terms of what design aesthetic we wanted to go with, I wanted something that was a little bit more masculine, not too glittery and just over the top, which you know can be great in the right environment. But for us, I wanted something that was a little bit more butch. Uh, <laughs> Poor Rick. My mom ran him all over San Diego for probably four or five hours straight on Saturday. But he was able to collect and find from multiple different stores these uh, pine cone uh, picks, I think she calls them, and a lot of different variations of balls on here. And then, of course, our bro Santa at the top. One of the things that's really important to me as we started to combine our lives and our living spaces together is to use things from his family and things from my family. And his mom is the sweetest woman in the world and she has given him so many things. We had these Christmas trees put away and he's like, can we use these trees? I'm like, let's do it. These suitcases I actually got from a estate sale of one of the properties that I sold um, in real estate. So repurpose that as well. We bought these candles actually from Costco. I think they were like 30 bucks. Mom would kill me if I changed the color, but they do turn like blue, purple, green, you know, for the other holidays. One of the things that was like super important in this corner is to give that height definition. We don't have something that's super tall. We want to have things that are all at different heights and different levels. And Rick went upstairs and he found these highball glasses and I think it's a parfait dish that I also got from the estate sale of a property I was selling and use them upside down to give it more height so all the candles are not at the same level. Added some of this frosted garland with little beads, some balls, and I think it turned out perfect. What do you guys think? Leave in the comments below. Let's get ropes in. Let's get physical. One of the things that was like super uh, special this year, uh, especially during Christmas time, is I've never actually decorated for Christmas with a partner. And I've had many Christmases, many beautiful decorations, but I haven't actually done it with somebody that I'm absolutely in love with. And combining our home and our lives together and getting to do this for the first time and him experiencing a real Rebecca Robeson Christmas decoration extravaganza, that was interesting. At least I think it was for you. I can definitely say having two Robesons all at the same time, <laughs> all the time going was a lot of fun and wild all the time. He's like, I'm gonna go get a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, what else do you need? I'm on my way to the store. One, more balls, more tinsel, whatever you need, I'm on my way. Yeah, mom's like, we need more pine cones. He's like, I got it. <laughs> Get me out of the house. <laughs> Is there anything that you feel like you learned this year, like doing this with my mom, that was kind of like a, oh, like you didn't, you didn't know it before or like didn't see things or think about things from that perspective previously? I think the biggest thing that I probably learned was that it's okay to kind of break things apart. I'd always buy things and kind of just, that's what I bought and put it in the tree and just, make it happen. She got these big bolt cutters and was like, you yeah. know, make it, make it work for where you need it to be. So that was something I definitely learned. Okay, so serious question. In your history, traditionally for you, how long does it take you to decorate your place for Christmas? I'd say about 30 minutes typically to kind of just put it together the same thing every year. Nothing changes and it just That was the checkout happens. line, <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> That was just get into the store the fifth time. And he's like, he's like going on right now, blocking out all of lock, December. Lock, lock, lock. <laughs> Perfect, because we do Christmas in July. <laughs>
All right, guys, so here's what we're doing today. Recently, um, I finished my Christmas filming and all my Christmas decorating, and I stayed in my guest room, which has an accent color of pink because I did it. You guys remember I did it for spring and summer. This is Brenda and Eric, her husband. Brenda's my housekeeper and husband. She's like a really good friend as well. And her husband, Eric, he's a man. We're just gonna leave it at that. And we love him because he's strong and he does everything for me. So um, I decided when I was staying in here, you know what? I'm gonna do this room for Christmas. My son, Scott, is gonna be here. I think he'll be fine with pink. So you wanna just watch. This is it. This is just filmed on my iPhone, no big deal. But I'll show you how I quickly, in a couple of hours, take a bedroom and turn it into a Christmas bedroom. off at Hobby Lobby today and picked up some ribbon, some battery operated lights. I love those. And I got some really cute little pink doubles. I think this is what the English call baubles. But at the top, to make it special, I either have this. Okay, but in other words, it swags, you know, from one side to the other. I like this one. That's better. Do you? Yeah. And this is what my center pillow that I made oh, is yeah. out of. Gosh, whoever invented zip ties and hot glue guns, ugh, I owe you such a debt of gratitude. And then I'm going to go up in the center. And this right here is my center. Oh, in, pocket. in my pocket. Okay, I'm eyeballing it. I think that's probably good enough. The next thing to do is to unfurl each grouping of lights. Are you ready for this? Okay, ready? Alexa, turn on guest room. Isn't that gorgeous? Wait a minute. Oh my gosh. One side twinkles and the other doesn't. Uh, they're not the same. You know what? That is such a rookie mistake. If you guys follow my Christmas decorating videos, you know one of the very first things that I teach you guys to do for your own sake, and this is why, is to always plug your lights in first because if you plug your lights in, you'll see if they work or not. And then you don't go through all the trouble of decorating something and then it doesn't work. Oh my gosh. I don't, and I don't have any more of these lights. You know what, Eric, we could call Shara because I know that she has some curtains of lights. I don't know if she has the twinkling kind or she has the non-twinkling. But if she didn't use them all this year, please, dear daughter, I pray that you have some of these lights. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Don't do what I did. Big mistake. Always plug your lights in before you do your work. All right, are you ready? Alexa, turn on guest room. Yay! And they both twinkle and they're both the same color. The other problem with with what I had up there before. This this one was a lot yellower and this one was whiter. And so now they're the same color and they both twinkle randomly. <sighs> okay, this was the other little pink uh, ball garland that I bought. And I chose to use that one up there. But what if I cut this apart and hot glued some of these balls into this wreath. I think that would be really pretty, so I'm gonna do that. These have holes on either end, so I'm going to try and avoid seeing that. <laughs> Find the color side I like the best. Put a dab of hot glue on there and just place it. You gotta hold it for a sec for it to dry. bow 
to hang it either here or here, and I think that's the spot. Really, I want to do something on this wall too. So this has the curtain of lights. It looks so pretty. And this is not going to have lights, but I thought it would be fun to hang balls in the window or baubles. Same exact bauble on two different color ribbons. My idea is that they drop from a ribbon, but I don't know if I want to use white ribbon or pink ribbon. So we're going to give it a try. So imagine this. And so are my shutters. And look, oh, see the pink one is turning sideways, so I can't even tell. I don't know if I like it at all. <laughs> Here, I got another thought. And this is like a, it's a clear, but it's iridescent ball. So it has, it picks up different colors. You know what, I think if I did all clear with the pink ribbon, thicker, pink ribbon. That's what I think I like. So that's why I buy multiple things so I have options so that I could see what it looks like in its location and then make my decision. We're going to go with clear and pink ribbon. I love how the lights on the windows turned out. So this is why, you know, I started this. And when I finished off last night with you guys, I told you I was gonna do every other one kind of thing. Well, I only had certain numbers, so I decided I had three of these. So this one, you know, hanging down the longest part, and it's also not in the way of the shutters if I open them. I thought that looked good there. Then I repeated it here, and what I did was, from the center out, these are all mirrored. If this was a really long span that I was doing this effect on, I wouldn't necessarily need to, to mirror it, but because it's so small, I think it's like, you can see it all at one time. Um, I used these ribbons, which is perfect, but here's how I did this, you know? It's super cool. I realized that if I took a piece of ribbon and I looped it, look at this. I can take that off really easily. So I just looped the ribbon here, then tied it on at the bottom. Then I swing it over the top. And the reason I thought this worked out so cool was look how pretty it looks actually on the rod when it's doubled like that. It kind of created a decorative effect there. Then I just did my best to eyeball it, make sure those are the same height. Then as I went out, I used a couple of my favorite. These are actually icicles, but they're ornaments. And they have like these amazing little jewel things inside. Aren't those just so beautiful? Those are from a friend of mine who sent them to me from Great Britain as a gift. So let's move on to a couple of last areas of the bedroom and then I'll show you how it all turned out, okay? This is what I took apart and I used on the wreath, right? I undid it and I pulled those off. Well, then I just retied it, even though it's, some, it's smaller. And I decorated one already, so I wanted to play around with it first. But look how pretty that looks. So I just take this and it's just a garland, you guys literally just a garland and I just sort of bring it around the tree almost like it's you know a I don't know like a swirl effect sort of fanciful and then just end it up at the top I probably like to keep house plants in the house at Christmas time but I don't have any place else to put it so it's staying but look at this I played around with the balls and these are like my random color balls. So I have this peachy color, millennial pink, um, even this vintage one, look how old this is. But I love to continue to use balls. This is not a damaged ball to me. This is a much loved Christmas ball that's been used over the years. And then I just sort of, to sort of bring it all together in the end, I used a couple of those, these balls here. and just sort of tossed them in here. So look at this, this is such cool fabric, you guys. If I go like that, it literally changes the direction of the sequence. So, 
knowing that that works that way, I could actually make something that looks Christmassy. Not just the color of the room, but actually Christmassy. So I, I drew out the words joy. Cute? So for example, if I wanna put a top on it, I just go like this. With a J. And I'll just go like this to bring these down so it's not quite so fatty looking. Yeah, look at this, you guys. Uh, take a look. These are again, hello, did I get mileage out of the Hobby Lobby stuff? Not kidding you. Yeah, oh, look, this one, it fell, and then Eric stepped on it. Mm-hmm. So I'm still gonna make it work. Nothing goes to waste in Becky's kitchen. But if you were a guest, would you be happy staying here? Would it bring you joy? I'm sorry, I have to, I have to get it this way. Okay, there, that's right. That's perfect. Okay, enjoy. So there you have it, my pink guest room <laughs> for Scott. Yes, and for Rick. And they're coming and it's gonna be wonderful and I'm sure that they're gonna like it. They'll see past the pink, maybe. Anyway, I hope that was helpful for you. Again, a completely different, more glammy, more fairy kind of look than what I did for Scott and Rick and what I did for Emily and Jimmy. Well. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, I wanna know if you like this format, this style of seeing all the things that go on and the behind the scenes things too, and how, how you know, even things as simple as getting to and from another state. All of it is part of the process of what it takes for me to go anywhere and get anything done. Anyway, I'm glad you let me share this with you. Thank you for coming back. And I hope by now you guys have already started in on your Christmas decorating. You know, we try to get these videos up as soon as possible. This one a little bit later, you know, actually the first week of December because I had to go do it first. All right, you already had Thanksgiving, right? You're seeing this after Thanksgiving. Have you started? Leave me a comment below and let me know if you've started. Also, the other thing I wanna know is, <clears throat> how far are you with your Christmas gift shopping? That's what I am uh, completely not struggling with, but that's what's on my plate now. Now that I'm back from my trip, I need to get, I need to get on Amazon and a few other uh, websites to get my Christmas shopping going. Um, oh, and then I'm filming this actually before Thanksgiving. You're going to see this after, but I'm going to shop for Black Friday. That's a great day. Do any of you guys shop on Black Friday? Is that your thing? I'm going to do it this year. Why not save some money? Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this and I look forward to, you know, maybe throwing in another video before the end of the year, just sort of, of the things that are happening, this new vlog style video. Uh, between now and the next time you see a YouTube video that comes up, follow me on Instagram because I'm on there all the time, posting, putting up reels, and doing stories. All right? Well, I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm thinking. Can you see? I'm thinking. I look forward to seeing you guys next time, and I, if you don't see me again before actual Christmas Day, and I hope you do, but if you don't, let me just tell you, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right, you guys, see you next time. Bye-bye. But I was just thinking, I need to use this guy instead. Hmm. So, did you just fart? Yes. Ah! <laughs> okay, I have to say, I've never had a cameraman do that before. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this video is classified. Ah! Nobody in the world is going to see this one. Huh?